Hi everyone and today's bite-sized video is about meditation. I asked some of you if you had any ideas of things you'd like me to talk about in these videos please to email me. One of the most common ones was meditation and I hope to get through all the subjects that have been suggested uh, in the order that they came in. So hopefully if you did request one it'll be up soon. But meditation, not just from the requests I received, but from when I'm teaching, I often get asked about meditation. Is it necessary? Um, it's not essential, of course, uh, but it's very, very helpful. So I'm just going to run through a few things about meditation. It's an enormous subject. Uh, meditation is something that's as old as uh, human existence, really. So um, it's a very big area, so I'm going to run through some things in, in traditional bite-sized fashion, but it's by no means comprehensive. And of course, it won't cover every form of meditation, otherwise we wouldn't be bite-sized. So let me just run through meditation. And what is meditation? Well, one of the first things that, that comes to us with those of us who have learnt meditation, is it's a distraction from random thoughts. And um, there are some claims, I can only say claims because I can't actually find the paper that relates to it, but there are, there are some claims that say that human beings have on average between 40,000 and 70,000 thoughts a day. I don't know if that's right, but let's even just say we have a fraction of that. Uh, perhaps we have 10,000 thoughts a day. And um, what's important is our awareness of the thoughts. Because, for example, if the percentage of those thoughts are angry thoughts, negative thoughts, frustration, thoughts of frustration, um, rather than positive thoughts then we're out of balance so it does become a distraction from random thoughts and we're just quietening that mind something many of you will be familiar with the expression the monkey mind the mind we just can't switch off and so it allows us to switch off from all those random thoughts which is very nice it's also a state of consciousness it's a state of awareness and being in a meditative state is obviously different to um, another state where perhaps you're you're watching the the final of a sport that you follow and you're very excited. Um, it, it it can it when we measure people in a meditative state, their brain waves are different to those who perhaps are at work engaged in a very heavy, very stressful task. So it is a state of consciousness. And it's also a focus and there are many forms of meditation that use a tool of focus, if you like, a point of focus. It's a state of peacefulness. Now, very few people who meditate would find that it made them anxious. Uh, perhaps at first you're a little bit un unsure. You might be unsure that, oh my goodness, you know, I'm not used to this. But it actually does create a state of peacefulness and what's interesting is the word meditation is derived from the two latin words meditari which means to think to dwell upon to exercise the mind and to heal and its sanskrit derivation meda means wisdom so from ancient languages uh, we have an understanding that we're looking at something that relates to the mind, that relates to healing and perhaps relates to wisdom itself. So why do we actually meditate? And there are many health benefits, of course. And um, one of them, which is a very famous study now, was conducted by Dr. Sarah Lazar in 2005. And Dr. Sarah Lazar is a Harvard-educated um, research professor, assistant professor, and at Massachusetts Institute of Technology. She conducted a very important study on meditation. Now, at the time, 
uh, Dr. Lazar was training for a marathon and it was advised to her that help with her muscles, her joints and also her focus, uh, she should do a yoga class. And she did this yoga class and all throughout this yoga class, the teacher was saying, oh, it will make you feel more compassionate. It will make you find problem solving much easier. And being the scientist that she is, her first thought was, yeah, 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 I'm having it suggested to me and it's probably a placebo effect. So she actually found she was experiencing them, but she wasn't convinced it was the actual meditation practice within the yoga that she was, uh, that was the result of this effect. So she did a study and this particular study was very interesting because she took a, a large group of people and she divided them into two. Now, Everybody in that study had an MRI of their brain. And half of that group, after they'd had their MRI, were given a mindfulness exercise to practice for the next few weeks. And the other half just carry on as normal. At the end of this experimental period, they all came back and they all had another brain MRI. What she noticed in the people who meditated were there were areas of the brain that had actually enlarged. Now, most of these areas of the brain, as we become older, shrink, they atrophy. And she was also interested that in people who were long-term meditators, that um, if you did an MRI of their brain, it was actually the same size in those particular areas that tend to shrink as somebody who was perhaps 20, 25 years old, if they could well have been well into their 70s or 80s. So there was something very physical going on with the meditation and absolutely fascinating research. And there has been a lot of other research. But what struck me is one area of the brain that did increase in thickness of those meditators for just a few weeks is an area of the brain called the insula. And the insula, um, Dr. Sarah Lazar explains, is the part of the brain that processes happiness. So by meditating, they'd grown the part of the brain that processes happiness. So we, we have some really good research here and her research is continuing. She wrote another paper in 2011 and uh, it's certainly worth looking her up and the reading about it if you're interested in the effects on all levels of meditation. So we know that the brain health is, is, is um, improved with meditation. Now, uh, other meditation societies have conducted their own research, some of it independent and some of it relating to their method of meditation. But in all cases, we have seen some studies produced, and you can look them up as well, um, that show that a reduction in hypertension, so blood pressure normalizing. On an emotional front, people report a sense of peace and calm, and also less conflict. And again, there have been some studies, one particular famous one in Chicago, where a very small percentage of the population were taught transcendental meditation and within a few months the crime rate had reduced by an, a massive amount. The feeling behind that is the fact that if you're with someone that's calm, that's peaceful, it's infectious and it has an effect on you. Their energy has an effect on you. Their emotional energy has an effect on you. And and I think we all know what that's like. If you're with someone who's particularly stressed, you start to feel stressed. It, it is kind of infectious and whatever's going on, whether it's your empathy that's doing it, doesn't really matter. Um, and so because of that, you find that people who meditate have less conflict in their lives. And we see that there's a better overall physical and mental health with people who meditate. So there's some really good benefits there. And so now we look at the types of meditation. As I said, this is by no means exhaustive. There's so many different types. Some of them 
uh, very interesting, but let's just look at a few of them. And we we'll look first at mindfulness. And mindfulness is a very simple technique and allows you just to become mindful of what is happening. So you become aware of something, you observe something. So you would become mindful, perhaps, of your thoughts, mindful of your breath, mindful of your body. Um, I was talking to someone about weight loss recently who was saying they were doing mindfulness with their food. So with every mouthful of food, they were becoming super aware of its tastes, of its textures, and also um, how satisfying it was. And they were losing weight by using mindfulness. So it's a great technique. And after this video, there will be made available very soon uh, a short three minute mindfulness exercise, which you can download for free. Um, all you need to do is just sign in your email address and that will be available to you free. So the more we can do this, I, I think the better. Mantra meditation. This is what I learned. I was in my 20s, early 20s, and a good friend of mine was taking her final exams of her degree at Sheffield University. And I lived in York at the time, in England. She came to visit me and I noticed such a huge change in her. And I said to her, you, you, you seem so calm because she'd been one of those really stressy you know, everything was, oh, too much trouble. Oh, my God, I can't cope type of people. And she said, yeah, she said at the university, they held for the students. They offered them a really cheap, you know, um, discounted course to learn transcendental meditation. And she was telling me all these facts and figures, like if you do this twice a day for 20 minutes, uh, 20 minutes is like having a four hour sleep. So for someone who was cramming for their finals and was up to the early hours of the morning, they could then go away for 20 minutes and feel uh, refreshed. Uh, I thought it was pretty spectacular, but in herself, I could see the results. So I found a course in Harrogate, which was about 45, 50 minutes away from where I lived. And I learnt with a, a, a qualified teacher transcendental meditation and I went on to be a teacher of transcendental meditation and, and I found it absolutely wonderful and I still do I don't always practice it uh, sometimes I feel you know it's going to be a quick mindfulness but it does use a mantra and of course there are other forms of using a mantra some people use mantras in other traditions as well. But your mantra is yours in Transcendental Meditation, not to be shared, it's personal. Let's have a look now at sound. And sound could be through chanting, chanting a mantra, for example. And some traditions work with mala beads and there are 108 beads in, uh, in the mala. And the idea is that you chant your mantra and for each bead and you do it 108 times and there are various reasons for that um what the tradition what the tradition is behind that drumming some people like the beat of a drum takes them into a kind of hypnotic state where they're not full of random thoughts and sound meditations as well if you've ever been to a really good sound bath you'll you'll know what i mean uh, sound is a frequency and those frequencies can affect the brain and uh, they can put them into a lovely meditative state. So there are different types of meditation that will appeal to different people. Yoga. Now, um, as you can probably see, I'm not someone who's done a lot of yoga in my life. Um, but I do work and have worked and do know quite a lot of people who are yoga teachers and people who do yoga. And there are various meditative practices within that. So that mindfulness of the breath, the position of the body, perhaps even the hands. And as you can see in this picture, um, you know, we've, we've got what we call a mudra, uh, a hand position. And it's a point of focus amongst many other things. And I'm sure those who teach the subject could expand on that and the reasons why a lot more than I can. But within yoga, which is 
we think of it as a physical process, but it's it's a mind, body, soul process. There are various practices and, and the breath comes into it, the position comes into it, the hand position comes into it. And then there's the guided visualization. And I love the guided visualization. Um, it's not necessarily uh, meditation in the sense of others. Your, your mind becomes very active, but it does have a point of focus. And going on this lovely journey, whether it's walking down a pathway with the beautiful trees and the sunlight, um, you know, into the forest, into the mountains, by the sea, on the beach. It, it It's really about you creating within yourself something very, very beautiful. And you are, through the power of your mind, taking your focus away from random thoughts again. And you're going on this lovely journey. Now, it's very good for mediumship uh, development at times because... What it's doing is allowing you to exercise those visual parts of the mind that um, are so important, particularly if you're developing your clairvoyance. So that is a brief summary of my little bite size on meditation. And, um, you know, I found it very beneficial. Uh, all the research shows it's very be beneficial not really able to find any that says it's going to destroy your life. I'm, I must admit, when I started Transcendental Meditation, I spoke to it, I spoke about it to somebody who was, um, let's say they were evangelical in, in their approach to their religion. They had been taught that it was the devil's work. Well, you know, okay. Um but uh, I can't see how all those health benefits and those benefits of a, a, a mental health being so much more improved and no religious influence in it whatsoever in what I was doing could be anything else. But um, what I'm trying to say is it's very hard to find anything negative. Personal opinion, perhaps, but the research but more than anything, the experience of those that do it and why they do it is what we need to really listen to. So thank you for another opportunity to do one of these little videos. If you like them, please hit subscribe, join the mailing list and uh, post a comment. Or if you like it, please press the like thumb underneath the video. And uh, I'm looking forward to the next one. But... Before the next one, there will be a free download of um, just a very, very short mindfulness exercise. So there's no reason not to give it a try if you haven't. Bye for now.